Hello everyone. In the third episode of Tech Bytes, we bring to you details about two of our marquee reports published last month, Deep Tech and Quarterly Industry Insights. To know a little more about what is covered in these two reports, I have with me Ashish Gupta, our lead analyst for startups and products, and Neha Jain, analyst tracking all the developments in the tech industry and diamond space. I will start with Ashish. Hi, Ashish. The first question to you is that this being our first detailed report on deep tech startups, can you elaborate on the startup, uh, deep tech startup industry in India and some interesting trends that you would like to highlight? Ashish? Thanks, Nimla. <clears throat> so, if you talk about the Indian deep tech uh, ecosystem, it has come a long way over the years. Though this ecosystem has not scaled too much, but slowly and steadily over the years, it has gained a lot of traction. It has uh, gaining its ground. And as the title of the report says, now it is well poised for creating an impact. Now to give you the state of the deep tech startup ecosystem in India, number one point is your ecosystem, the deep tech ecosystem is quite vibrant. Why we are seeing it vibrant? Because there are, all, uh, there are over 3,000 plus deep tech startups, which are growing at an exponential pace. So if you talk about the CAGR, the current CAGR, the, uh, the last 10 years CAGR of these startups are currently stand at 53%. So there's a high exponential growth observed in this, uh, in this uh, deep tech startup ecosystem. If you talk about the adoption, now the top adoption among the verticals, enterprise tech and BFSI leads the race. So nearly one third of the deep tech startups belong to enterprise tech and BFSI. Funding has also, the funding is very important for a, a startup. And if you talk about this ecosystem, funding has been growing over the years. So as of now, if we talk about the 2021 numbers, uh, the 2021, uh, the deep tech ecosystem raised over $2.7 billion funding, which is 1.6 over 2020. Talent, again, uh, important aspect of the deep tech ecosystem. So if you talk about it has a strong tech talent, and if we talk about the numbers, nearly 25% of the deep tech skilled talent work in the deep tech startups. Now, there's been an interesting exercise we did uh, in our uh, deep tech report, like within the deep tech startups, there are inventive deep tech startups, which are, which are creating new solutions. And what the USP of this deep tech startup is that they build solution using intellectual property. So uh, just to give you some numbers that there are out of these 3,100 overall deep tech startups in the ecosystem, Nearly 500 belongs to this inventive deep tech startups. Now, inventive, if you talk about the talent part, inventive deep tech startups have 1.4x higher deep tech talent. But the key focus areas of this uh, inventive startups, inventive deep tech startups are video analytics, data analytics platform, customer engagement platforms, healthcare diagnostic, autonomous driving, automation robots, and many more. So this is just a glimpse of the deep tech ecosystem in India. Now you also uh, mentioned about the trends. Trends play a key role in the growth of this ecosystem. And in the past few years, we have seen a set of some trends which are actually leading to the growth of the ecosystem. The number one trend which is actually visible in this deep tech ecosystem, uh, as I already mentioned also, uh, the high CAGR, the growth of deep tech technology. And if you talk about the deep tech technology, like AI, IoT, big data analytics, blockchain, and AR, we are all are growing at a CAGR of over 50%. Startups in the niche areas like cybersecurity, quantum computing, and semiconductors have also increasing their uh, share, which will open further open the door of deep tech adoption in the ecosystem in the future. So overall, deep tech te technologies are increasing their penetration in the overall startup ecosystem. Another important trend which we have seen is the growth of inventive deep tech startups because they are, they are the startups which are creating patentable products and solutions. Now, if we talk about uh, the numbers, why we, it's a trend, there are over 370 plus patents filed in India by this, uh, uh, you know, deep tech startups. 72% share of inventive deep tech startups, which are filed for at least one patent. So that is a USP of the inventive deep tech startups. 92% share of the patents were filed in 2016 to 2021 cohort. So overall, if we talk about the, this patent filing, last five years has been the key uh, because 92%, more than 90% of these patents were filed in the last five years. We talk about the key verticals, enterprise tech, health tech, SMA logistics, energy are the major key verticals. The third trend which we are observing in this uh, 
overall uh, ecosystem is consumer centric solutions are gaining traction now what we what we mean by consumer centric solutions are the b2c model so we have seen that there is a more than 3x increase in the deep tech adoption by b2c startups and this is happening across the vertical so over 25 sectors are leveraging b2c models if you talk about the verticals like bfsi health tech ed tech and fitness and wellness have seen substantial growth in the b2c segment so why we are, why is it a trend because over the years we have seen that b2b is more prominent in the deep tech ecosystem but in the past 3 4 5 years we have seen that b2c models have come up and uh, you know lot of startups are coming up in the b2c segment the another trend which you are observing is the <laughs> deep tech is increasing its reach so deep tech is no more limited to just traditional sectors like your if you talk about the bfsi or your ed tech or health tech now bfsi now the deep tech uh, sector is increasing its penetration and they are moving into the new uh, areas like environment tech aviation maritime and defense and life sciences so more and more deep tech startups are coming into these new new verticals which is again very promising if you want this sector to to grow, grow and uh, flourish in the coming years the last and the more important trend which we have seen is uh, the uh, the popular use cases are attracting a lot of investment by mean by the use cases we mean that if you talk about supply chain management health tech bfsi enterprise tech and agri tech these are attracting a lot of investment and if you talk about the numbers each of these verticals have raised over 200 billion dollars in 2021 so deep tech startups raise are raising funding across multiple areas now uh, we have talk about the verticals now we'll talk about the use cases so just to give us some of the use cases like drone delivery autonomous delivery bots cold chain monitoring and fleet management are some of the use cases which we are seeing uh, are getting good you know uh, getting good investments now uh, we have also listed down some of the top use cases which are getting a lot of funding so some of the top use cases are patient health the record analytics logistic management ai based new banking uh, driver safety and monitoring farm intelligence and the, all these solutions are raised, have raised over 40% of the total funding so all in all uh, these are the trends which are driving the deep tech ecosystem in india and i think if we continue if the trends continue to uh, come up i think we expect a lot of strong growth of this ecosystem in the near future thank you thank you ashish that is really great insights i would say deep insights that you have covered right now uh, just if you want to summarize and you know in two lines if you would like to just uh, give a idea about why should a reader actually access our report what is different in it that would make them come and read the report any thoughts <laughs> yeah so first of all i think this is the first detailed report on the indian deep tech ecosystem frankly as far as i know there is no other such detailed report on deep tech another report another point is that uh, this report not only provide you uh, about the current status of the deep tech ecosystem in india but it also provide you in depth in depth analysis of how this ecosystem looks like it provides you uh, in depth on the technology analysis it provides you uh, we we also try to cover the ecosystem enablers the ecosystem stakeholders what are their roles which all stakeholders are active the impact which this deep tech ecosystem can create over the next 5 years also through a survey we also tried to highlight the challenges and need of this sector which uh, uh, we did a survey uh, among the with 60 plus founders so through that survey we tried to highlight what are the challenges and need of the sector and how what and we also tried to suggest a ways to address and grow this sector so all in all we have covered a lot of depth e uh, in and out of this all the sector and that's why this report is uh, uh, important for all the stakeholders and we request all the readers to read this report because it covers a holistic view of this sector okay, thank you so much i'm sure it's really exhaustive by the way you've given all the explanations thank you ashish i will now move to neha uh, welcome neha uh, so neha i know that you regularly track the top tech company financials and their management commentary i uh, just thought that can you share some uh, few interesting insights or takeaways about last quarter and what can be expected in the future so oh, thanks amla yeah thanks amla so uh, you know the last quarter which is 
first quarter of financial year 23. It started on a mixed note with you know revenue growth expectations. They remained positive. However, what we saw was margins continue to be under a lot of pressure. So, you know, it, it it's kind of a uh, mixed feelings that we have for the sector right now. Companies across the board have highlighted cautious optimism for the coming quarters as the global output contraction continues to trigger corrections in the global GDP outlook. Now, however, on the technology spending side, if we see that, you know, there there is still expectation for growth, uh, although at a lower rate compared to last year. So now this whole positive uh, side on the technology spending will continue to support the demand for the sector in FY23, which we also see in the guidance that are released across companies. So uh, there's this uh, positive uh, uh, growth momentum, at least for FY23 that we see. Uh, looking at the key markets, so, you know, North America, it remained strong while there was some weakness in Europe uh, for obvious reasons, you know, that there's the, the uncertainty and the war fear is still around. Uh, on the vertical side, if you look at, you know, all the verticals, they witnessed growth and were positive while we saw some stagnation coming into BFSI. So overall, uh, you know, uh, Good positive results on verticals except for BFSI where some signs of stagnation were seen. Now, if we if we look at, you know, the report also track a lot of metrics. So if we, if we see most of the metrics, they remain positive this quarter. I mean, if I start with revenues, the industry grew 1.8% quarter on quarter. There was positive net client addition company across most of the companies. There were more clients being added. More employees were being added. The employee growth was, uh, you know, 3.3 percent quarter on quarter. So overall, a positive uh, light on those parameters. Now, one key highlight that we saw this quarter was the average attrition, which remained high though, but it has started to show signs of stabilization. So there's some positive trend that we are seeing on the attrition side. Now, the only worrisome challenge that we see is the on the margin side, which remain under pressure considering, you know, there, there's rising costs, people are coming back to offices, people have started traveling, salaries remain high considering there's more demand for talent compared to, uh, you know, the supply that is there in the market. So overall, uh, mixed start and uh, let's see how things pan out. Now, going forward, if we look, for forward to the next quarter, what we uh, foresee is that the sequential growth trend that we saw this quarter is expected to persist in the next quarter. This is that the second quarter of FY23. I think, and the key reason what is driving is you know companies are still giving a healthy deal pipeline of over 15 billion. So, if we look at a uh, uh, the optimistic side is that the deal pipeline is still good, and so the growth expectation for the rest of the year stays. So overall, I think a uh, uh, mixed start to the new financial year. Thank you. Thank you, Neha. I think we'll have to wait for one or two quarters more to know what exactly how it pans out, whether we'll have the same growth that we had in FY22. Thank you so much. Yeah. But just I'll uh, sum it up with the uh, same like I asked Ashish the question why I know that this is one of the very important reports that we come out with with a lot of traction and people reading it. So what is it that will make them read this quarter report? What according to you would be the key uh, takeaways that they should, they should look at? So, so if I have to just summarize, you know, people who are interested in, you know, knowing the technology industry, how it is shaping up, I think they sh it's a good read for them as they get, they get to know about all the key trends that are shaping up the industry across different technology verticals. So be it, you know, IT services, BPM, ERND, they'll give a gist of the key trends across these uh, sub verticals uh, of Indian technology sector. And what we have done since last quarter and, uh, you know, we, we have tried to put out a quick analysis of key global technology industry as well. So that is something that anybody who is looking out for key numbers as far as technology industry goes, I think they can come and see how the quarter has panned out for those companies. And it it is, it is a good read for everybody who wants to know anything about the technology industry, be it the Indian side or the global industry. I'm sure, Neha, I know that this is one of our most important reports. Thank you. Thank you, both of you, for your time and insights.
uh, for uh, just I'll like to leave the audience uh, saying that please check our community page to access any of our reports. These reports are also available there. Uh, do share your feedback with us and let us know the comment in the comment sections of topics you think we should cover cover in our research. So that's it from the NASCOM Insights team. Until we meet again in our next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.